Welcome guys to day two of our painting project on this barred owl. I'm ready to just jump right back into this. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. Love it so much when the sun just comes into this room like this. So let's do it. Okay, so today we're gonna be getting into a lot more of the details of this owl here. Starting with the eyes, like I mentioned before, and we're gonna keep moving down here. And this is called our block in stage. So we're just gonna kind of be blocking in sections of colors, and then we can go through and add all the details later. But now, what we're gonna do is start blocking in the main colors for our owl, and that's how we're gonna start this thing off. I've got my palette here from the other day and I've just covered it with some saran wrap and we'll see how well it's kept. Sometimes it works, most of the times it works really well. Yeah, so my paint is still fresh, looking good. This just helps me save it a little better. I'm gonna have some cadmium yellow medium here. Don't need too much. And I think that's actually all I'm going to end up needing other than these colors that I've already had. So let's do it. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is figure out a light source for this guy. Um, I think I'm gonna have it come from over here. This is gonna be kind of the light source direction. It's gonna come in this way. So this side of his body is gonna be in the shadow. This side is gonna have the light on it. So as I'm starting to work on these eyes, I'm gonna have them reflect this as the light source. So. Remember yesterday how I told you guys how to make black. Remember we had the burnt umber and ultramarine blue. So let's mix some of that up real quick. I got burnt umber, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Really, really nice dark color. I have not cleaned off my palette from the other day. So these two colors are just dry. There's our color. There it is right there basically black, I think. And we're just going to start off by filling his eyes in again, because you can see they're a little bit patchy looking. And remember how I mentioned yesterday that I think I got his eyes a little too large? Um, I'm gonna kind of adjust them during this process, this blocking in. So see how that second layer of paint just kind of makes it really deep and dark. There we go. There we are. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take that same color I had and just mix a little bit of white in with it. And you'll get a color that's pretty gray. So, there we go. So see this nice gray color? Now I'm gonna mix some burnt sand into that so it's like a warm gray, warm brown gray kind of tone here. I'm gonna mix a little more blue in there because it's gotten too brown. The brown and the blue kind of just play back and forth with one another so that you can kind of adjust your warmth or your coolness. Coolness. Okay, I like that. That's a nice gray color. And I'm going to start doing his, while I'm waiting for his eyes to kind of dry off, I'm gonna start working on the areas around it. So this is where I'm gonna kind of shrink up his eyes. So. I'm gonna have it come here and I'm gonna kind of cut off the top right there. I'm just gonna frame the outside of his eye first. See how I'm kind of taking out some of it? Alright. So there we go. Now this is a pretty dark gray color. And we always want to kind of save our tonal best for last. That's something that one of my favorite artists, uh, Andrew Tischler, he always says, save your tonal best for last, meaning 
don't go all the way to your brightest color until the very end or at least later on in the process so. okay so we have outlined that eye and he's going to have the dark come right here this is a nice dark color all right I like that I like that okay so now I'm gonna take this dark color and what I'm kind of doing is blocking in the areas where I see that he the the feathers are a little bit darker in my reference picture that way I can start coming around it with the light ones so there we go so I'm kind of playing with that there and he's got kind of some these circular marks in the feathers around his eyes so I'm gonna keep blocking those in like this kind of leaving gaps in between because now then we're gonna go back with a lighter color so you can see I'm gonna just kinda and make sure that your 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 brush strokes are all going the directions that the feathers are going so we're gonna that's why watching the reference picture is so important there we go I like that I like that Still just using this color here. Let's go over to the other side. And start working on this eye. Go just shrinking it up a little bit. Keep reloading your brush as you need. We'll just get this, uh, this color all used up. There we go. So just small little strokes, small little strokes. And we'll start building up this feather texture. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to mix in a little bit more white with that same color and we'll kind of give it a test with just a little bit more of the burnt sienna. And now watch what happens if I paint this on top. So in those gaps that I left in between here, I'm just going to take this lighter color, start filling it in. A little bit cool it's a little bit like a cool color not really a warm color so I'm gonna add more of the burnt sienna that warm burnt sienna color let's see what that looks like there we go that's a little bit better now I don't want to cover up too much of what I've already painted so just make sure you're layering things well paint in between what you've already done you don't want to take it out too much it's okay if you cover up some of the other stuff but that's I mean like that's part of layering that's why we're doing this but you gotta make sure that you leave it and at this point we're just we're just getting paint on here we don't really want to worry too much about um, there we go I just painted an eyelid on there that eyelid oops is a little bit lighter right above his eye there we go yeah. short little strokes is all you want okay so for this area right here I'm gonna mix in even a little bit more white with my color I'm just using the same pile of paint and just just adjusting it as I work so now this I'm just gonna block in He's also got like a really light colored bottom lid here. So I'm just paint that on. Like that. There we go. Now you can just kind of see with these simple, simple colors, we're just building up this texture slowly, stroke by stroke. Alright. 
And I think that side's looking pretty good for now for this block in. And then I'm gonna go over to this other side, but remember I said that this side of his face is gonna be a little more in the shadows. So I'm gonna be mixing in this burnt sienna again and this blue again with my color, kind of tone it back down, bring it back down to a darker level overall. And then it will shadow that side of his face better. Kind of give him more of a three-dimensional quality. Maybe even a little bit cooler. It's okay if it's on the cool side of gray. All right. All right, so let's start building up this second layer. now. That color is very similar to the one I just painted. So I'm gonna add a little bit white, a little bit of white, and see how this, there we go. So that stands out just, just enough. We're just gonna remember to fill in those spaces in between. just build up that feather texture. Now, something that's really unique about acrylic paint is that if you, this isn't noticeable most of the time, but sometimes when you're working with very small differences in colors, so see how there's the difference between like this gray and like this gray and this gray is not really that much. When you're working with small differences in color like that, um, you'll actually notice that when you paint a color on the canvas, when it's wet, when the paint's wet, it will actually be uh, a lighter color, and then it will dry darker. So if you ever feel like you need to err on the side of being lighter, too light or too dark, you could probably err on the side of being um, too too light because it will it will dry darker. It's kind of one of those weird things. Oil paint doesn't do that. Um, just acrylic. It's just the, the joys of it. All right. So I'm gonna give him this top lip, top lid to his eye again. And see how even I painted that top lid on there and it was lighter? That's pretty much dried and gone away. So I might mix in a little bit of white here off to the side with my with that color. And then add that top lid in again. And I'll go back in and refine that eye again later. Okay. So then we're gonna give this eye its bottom lid. All right, there we go. Okay. The face is probably one of the most important parts. Probably the most important part. Definitely the most important part of this owl. So just take your time building up these feathers. All right, so I'm gonna mix in a little more white so I can lighten up my tone here and do this little C shape that goes around his eyes. Remember, I'm leaving all these black spots. It's okay if I overlap just a little bit, but I just, I wanna leave those darkness points um, so that I get some depth. So that's where the, the feathers are the deepest and those feathers are black. So it's gonna help give them some three dimensionality that, that way also. Okay. And at this point, even if I leave little gaps and let that orange color shine through, it's gonna be, it's gonna be just totally fine. It's gonna be totally fine. Cause it's gonna, like I said yesterday, like that's gonna give him some life, some warmth underneath his feathers. Okay. That is looking good. Okay, so I'm gonna do his beak first just to block that in. So that color is going to be some of this burnt sienna here. I'm just gonna mix it over here. I don't really need that much. I'm gonna put some of that back. So some burnt sienna and then this is where we're gonna use our yellow. And this is a pretty, we're gonna keep this, I mean, it's, it's a nice light color in the end, but remember, we're, we're gonna start everything darker and then slowly build up to light. So if, it, if I'm erring on the side of being too dark for this block in stage of the painting, that's okay. So this is kind of like this dirty brown yellow color, but I think that's just what I want for his beak. All right, so I'm just gonna fill it in. And then we'll build up more layers later, okay? All right. 
Now, let's start working on these outside areas around his head. So I'm gonna go back, keep mixing up that gray color. Honestly, it's only like a mixture of those four different colors, the titanium white, burnt sienna, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. And you just basically mess with those ratios and play around with it and see how you get these warm grays, these cool grays. That's, that's the fun thing about a painting like this is you're just doing little changes to that gray, that mixture of gray, okay? So, this is a pretty dark gray that I've mixed up now. And I'm, so I'm gonna put it on the dark side of his head. Just kind of block it in there. See, I've mixed in a little bit more blue with my gray here, so it's nice and cool on the side, because typically you want your light source to be a nice warm color, so the shadow side is gonna have blue, more blue in that gray. So, just filling this in. And you can see how I'm kinda taking out some of my black line here. I'm gonna be able to put that back later. That black circular ring around his face. All right, so I'm going to build up this area underneath his beak and I'm going to mix in more blue and burnt umber together so that that'll be a nice nice dark color underneath. pretty good there so let's start building up the other side remember that's gonna be just a little bit lighter gray with a little more burnt sienna in it give it that warmth let's see how this one looks maybe a little lighter there we go let's see what that looks like all right there we go now that's very similar to this background color so we might have to work on that later on in the process so he stands out from the background enough but for now we're just, we're only concerned with blocking in these basic colors. I'm gonna just, I think that his neck is a little wider over here, so I might just do that. Okay, so now we got these light feathers, we're just building up. We've blocked in, basically blocked in his head. All right, let's keep going down a little bit here now. I'm debating on this. I'm, gonna, I'm just looking back and forth at my reference picture, seeing what needs to change, what I'm missing, and what I can do to add. All right, so. I'm gonna call that good for his head for now and start working down into this portion of his body. And basically we're gonna be messing with those same ratios of these warm grays and cool grays, which is something you just kinda of have to experiment with yourself. See what it looks like when you do, when you mix together those colors. You're just kinda of playing around with it and then you'll start getting a feel for, oh, when I add more of that burnt sienna, I'm gonna get a more, more warm gray. So I'm just adjusting the same pile of paint throughout the process. And that way you get a lot of various colors in the textures of this bird. Okay. So now overall I'm looking back and forth in my reference picture and these back feathers here are darker uh, in color but they're on the light side. That's where the light's going to be hitting them. So I'm going to start off with making a nice dark gray, and that's pretty blue. And I'm just about out of burnt umber paint on my palette, I need to reload that.
Now let's block in those bottom feathers. Here we go. I'm gonna mix in a little bit more water with my paint so it just flows nicely and I'm just gonna start painting these in. Kind of staying within my lines that I've made with the background. blending it in with those other colors that I've mixed in towards his neck just to kind of give him some continuity I'm just gonna f I'm just gonna fill it in because we'll just keep adding layers on this later on but we need to have this dark, this dark base. Make sure you're blending things out so that you don't have any, you know, ridges of paint sticking up. Because that will be very difficult to remove later. If if you want to, if I mean, if you want to go with some impasto kind of textured paint quality, yeah, go for it. It's up to you. It's looking pretty good to me. It's looking pretty good. I like that. So yeah, this is why they call it the block in layer because I just made this block of gray paint on his on his back feathers there. Okay. So these front ones here are gonna be actually lighter, even though they're on the dark side. But just for this block in, we're gonna make it lighter and warmer. So I'm gonna mix in that burnt sienna and this white. with that gray color I was using before. And that looks pretty good. And we'll start with this portion up here by his neck. And remember these feathers, we kind of sketched it out yesterday. These ones are kind of hatched this direction. And then these ones are like more vertical bars. That's why they call this a barred owl. It's because of the bars on the front here. But for now, let's just block in this portion, kind of going more horizontally with our brush strokes. And I'm going to leave this portion right here until I can mix in a little more brown and blue in with my color so that it's darker. So see how I've made this darker color. And I might, I might take my brush and kind of flatten it on my palette. Let me show you. So if I take my brush, this is just a round brush. So if I take this and kind of flatten it on my palette here, I'm gonna get a flat tip to it. And so that way I can get more of these hatchy, you know, thinner marks as I blend it. Just keep, I'm gonna make this a little darker over here. Just wanna reinforce that shadow side of things. Flatten up my brush a little bit. There we go, all right. Now this is all gonna get filled out with a lot of detail later. But for now, oops. This is gonna be just what we need. Just what we need. All right. So, I might even mix a little more burnt sienna in with this gray right here. See that nice warm gray color right there? Mm. And just kind of, kind of work around those dark strips that we made the other day. Um, you'll overlap them just a little bit, but that's okay. And just kind of Give him these nice, nice, more like vertical bars on his body. And 
And at this point, my paint's pretty thick. I'm not mixing in a lot of water with it so that it's, you know, going to cover the canvas really well. It's not going to. And now, you see how, yeah, I'm working this over and it's not, it's covering up more of those dark strips than I thought it would, but that is okay. You can always put more in. My art teacher, Bonnie, she always said her famous, her famous lines were, it's just paint. It's just paint. Just paint, darling. You can always cover it up. You can always add more. So, I'm not too worried about it. I might make it darker. Yeah, so whenever I want to make my gray darker, it's that ultramarine blue and burnt umber in kind of an equal ratio. I mean, like, there's no way to measure these things, but see how I just mix that in? And that's that darker. Now you can see that one had a little more blue in it. So it's a cool gray. And this is just going to help reinforce that dark opposite side from the light, the dark, the shadowed side of the animal. Now, this portion, I'm looking at my reference picture. This looks like it needs to be like this portion right here, that triangle, is a part of this wing, the more I'm looking at it. So, oh boy. Look at what you've done now. So see, I'm just gonna extend this downwards off off the canvas. There we go, there we go. And then this is gonna be a part of this front piece. Okay, there you go. This is just, this is just the part where you just kinda get the paint on there. You just wanna cover them, cover them all up with paint. Okay. So let's mix up, I'm gonna wash my brush out, mix up that black that I talked about with the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. And then that I'm gonna to use to kind of reinforce all our darks that we've kind of lost out, that we put all these mid-tones on here and we've lost a lot of these dark portions. So I'm gonna take this color and rebuild these. Just not too much, just kind of slightly. kind of we're gonna make them pop really well by adding these blacks these these black colors right back in there we go now Filling in this side, making it, bringing back that shadow with these horizontal feathers. And he's got kind of this dark spot under his chin here, so I'm gonna reinforce that. Okay, so now add a couple more of these horizontal feathers. My paint's still a little bit wet on there, so it's blending really nicely. Okay, let's put these vertical bars back on here. They don't have to, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be like perfectly straight bars. They should just be kind of, you know, mostly vertical. They can be a little wavy. You kind of want some of them to like go and then stop, and then other ones start back. Some of them can be dark, some can be light, you just wanna... These are feathers, they're all gonna just kinda be feathery. All right, this is looking pretty good. Okay, now... I might add some shadows underneath because this, these, these 
uh, wing feathers here are kind of overlapping on top of uh, these chest feathers here. So I might add a little bit of a shadow underneath that portion of it with this dark gray. Just a real soft shadow just to help me remember that there's some depth there to paint. And now I'm going to add a couple of these individual like wings, feathers. So just with this dark I'm going to Add a couple of these, and as I approach the edge over here, they're going to get skinnier, just to kind of give them that foreshortened look that it's kind of curving away from you. Now, there we go. This is going to come like this. I don't want to get too bogged down with it, but then I've got these feathers here. There's a couple. That are short right there, and they kind of stop. There we go, and then some longer ones that come out from underneath those. Okay, man. So for this block, in I think we're looking pretty good. I think I think we just about got it for 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 stage two here. I think we just we just did it. Um, so you can see there's there's. Everything's very subdued, everything's very toned down, there's not a lot of differences between the really light colors and the really dark colors. Everything's just very kind of mellow, and that's what we want for now. We just want to get these base colors on here, and then we'll be able to kind of build him up and sculpt him three-dimensionally with the paint, so that we can add the lights and the darks um, on this kind of mid-tone uh, bird that we got here. But man, that's looking so good! I think we got it. I think we're good. What's up? You want to say hi? He's <laughs> a good boy. So guys, we are done with our second day of painting on this. I think it's gonna turn out looking fantastic. I'm so stoked. So, come back tomorrow. We'll keep painting this guy. Gonna be so cool. <laughs> See ya later.